Hi, welcome to Happy Tales. I'm Cheryl Rosenthal, Communications Coordinator at the Oshkosh Area Humane Society. And I'm Joni Geiger, Executive Director of the Oshkosh Area Humane Society. And we'd like to welcome you today, and our show is going to be about small mammals. Right. Um, it's uh, kind of the forgotten <laughs> pet, Cheryl, as far as just, um, you know, a lot of people traditionally think of a humane society as cats and dogs, and obviously we have those as well, but we do have a lot of small mammals here, and um, depending on the mammal, they can have a lot of care attached to it. So. Exactly. We're going to be talking about rabbits and hamsters and gerbils and uh, guinea pigs and ferrets and the needs that they have and some of the do's and don'ts about owning a pet like this. And um, I think when you get a pet like this, you need to know that they need as much care as having a cat or dog. And sure. there's a lot of things to consider. Sure. So and, and very often when we see these animals surrendered to us, um, it, it is apparent that people haven't necessarily cared for them the way they should have. And I don't think that's because people are necessarily cruel as much as it is just plain ignorance. So right. hopefully we can address that today. Right. And become a good resource center for people who are sure. having a small mammal in their home. Sure, so let's get started. Here we are with Lindsay and uh, Donner the rabbit. He's a neutered male. And uh, when I was growing up, Lindsay, I had rabbits and we lived in the country and I had indoor outdoor rabbits. They were outside in the summer, but then in the winter they were brought into the house and they were litter box trained. And I don't think a lot of people know uh, that you can keep a rabbit in the house and that we really recommend that animals, especially rabbits, are kept in the house. Uh, but they need special housing. Uh, what's the best recommendation? Um, for a rabbit this size, now Donner is one year old now, so this house was fine for him when he was little, but now that he's a little bit bigger, he needs more space. Um, in general, they need at least three feet by five feet for a rabbit this size. Three feet by five, five feet. feet. Yeah, okay. for a rabbit this and size. And what, what does he need in his cage? What, are the, what do we need to do for Donner to meet his needs in his cage? Well, I'll talk about what he needs in his cage, but it's also important to remember that he needs a lot of time outside of his cage, even if he has everything he needs in his cage. Right. Just um, like cats and dogs, rabbits need a lot of exercise, exercise. don't they? Yes. Okay. So um, the first thing that's important for an indoor rabbit is a litter box. Um, if a rabbit is supplied with a litter box and you place their hay, which is the main part of their diet, inside of the box, they will relieve themselves in the litter box and it makes the whole rest of the cage much easier to clean. I bet it makes the rabbit much happier too, doesn't yes, it? Yes, yes. So in our litter box we have wood pellet stove pellets and um, that just supplies the base and then in the box of course we have the hay because rabbits go to the bathroom so while the, they're eating. So the wood stove pellets will absorb the urine Yes. and the hay is there for the rabbit to eat for nutrition but at the same time he'll relieve himself in the box. That's right, okay. that's right. And so, and do I clean that every day, twice a day? If you have a rabbit and it's inside your house, you're gonna to wanna to scoop out what's dirty in the box every single day. And that certainly makes it a lot easier than having a rabbit that's soiling all over his cage right. by okay. having a litter box. Uh, in the past, popular cages had a wire mesh bottom and the droppings would fall through. Um, that kind of teaches a rabbit to go to the bathroom all over their cage. It's also hard on their feet. I was gonna say, don't they need a platform? Because walking on a cage all the time is very difficult on yes. their feet. So. Yeah. So, and what kind of, then what do I put on the bottom of the rest of the cage? Well, in this, in the rest of the bottom of the cage, we have aspen bedding. Um, aspen bedding is the only safe bedding for rabbits. Um, there are other types of bedding that are marketed for taking care of odor, but when your bunny is litter box trained, you don't need to worry about odor so much. So we've just got aspen bedding in there, and that's more for traction than anything. Okay. And I see that well, water, of course, all animals need water. Yep. And nutrition. Uh, I see he's got some food pellets in there. That looks kind of blah to me. Uh, you know, does the rabbit know the difference? The rabbit doesn't know the difference. Most commercial rabbit foods are made out of alfalfa, and alfalfa is not actually the ideal for a bunny. Alfalfa was developed so that meat rabbits could gain weight fast. So sometimes it has health effects. So you want to just feed a small amount of pellets. And if you can, you want to get Timothy hay pellets. Timothy hay. And the Timothy hay is what was in the litter box. Yes, and they okay. can have unlimited so, amounts of Timothy hay. Now, a lot of times people also want to give their rabbits, you know, well, you always see them getting the bowl of, you know, like Bugs Bunny, they get the, the carrots and the lettuce and the celery. Are those things good for my rabbit? Those things are good for your rabbit. But not a steady diet of that. 
That's right, they need it in small amounts. And if you have a rabbit at home and they haven't had fresh fruits and vegetables, you need to introduce those slowly. And you can find a list of appropriate vegetables and fruits on rabbit care websites because there are things that are poisonous okay. for them. So there is an actual society for rabbits that yes. people can, can go to to get more information. Now, uh, I see some toys in here. Um, a little rattle uh, and uh, something that looks like wood pieces. Mm -hmm. Why is that important for your rabbit to have? It's important for rabbits. Now, the one thing that's not in this cage, I just wanted to mention, is a hutch for him, a place to hide. Um, and a lot of times you can get those made out of wood. It's important for rabbits to have something to chew, to wear down their teeth. So the toys that are in here do two things. They keep him mentally stimulated so he can play with those things, but they also wear down his teeth. Okay, uh, and so that, that really makes a lot of sense. If he needs a hutch to hide in, mm -hmm. and he needs his litter box, and he needs a place to eat, I don't know about you, but you know, I'd like to have you know, things moved around. Mm -hmm. Makes sense that he would need a three by five cage uh, to accommodate his needs. Yep. But then he also needs to be able to exercise. That's right. And how do you, you know, let your rabbit exercise in your house? Um, I guess you would have to actually um, rabbit proof a room or or you can use some kind of enclosure. Mm -hmm, that's right. Um, a lot of people will choose a room that doesn't have a lot of cords or things that the rabbit can get into or a room that doesn't have carpet. Um, when you exercise your bunny you want to have toys down and their litter box down so that they have a place to go to the bathroom but you have to make sure that they can't get into danger as well. Because okay. I, I know that I had a rabbit it chewed the bottom of all my mother's co uh, <laughs> curtains. She wasn't very happy about that so we did limit his uh, space and we did find that if we put the litter box in the kitchen area mm -hmm. with the rabbit he would go to his litter box and wouldn't leave little droppings all over the all over the floor and uh, I'm always amazed at how much they you know they do play and they enjoy to to run around mm -hmm. um, now I know that there's something about rabbits rabbits are prey to a lot of different animals mm -hmm. um, when they live outside now this is the animals the rabbits that we see here are domesticated rabbits um, but they still have that same fear when people reach over them. Uh, they think that they're going to be harmed or picked up like a hawk would pick them up or a coyote or a wolf. Uh, do rabbits like to be picked up? Rabbits in general don't like to be picked up and carried around. Um, they will enjoy sitting on your lap once they're used to that. Um, but in general, when you're getting your rabbit out to exercise, it's important to open the door and let the rabbit kind of come out on its own. Um, so you can set the cage in an area where they can choose to come out on their own. You can lure them out with little treats and so that they're more comfortable. Their cage is really their safe spot. Okay. And then once they're out, if you're going to pick them up, you've got to scoop underneath them and hold them close to your body. You never want to pick up a rabbit by their scruff um, near their ears because right. well, that's and very I, and I think that sometimes we've seen in the cartoons people will pick, you know, pick up a rabbit by their ears or by their scruff and that is a big no-no. You that's need right. to, just like any animal, they want to be supported underneath uh, their body and mm -hmm. like you said held All close. close. So because eventually you have to pick up your rabbit. Like, um, Is veterinary care important for a rabbit? Um, that is one thing that when I was growing up, and that was a long time ago, my rabbits didn't go to the veterinarian. Mm -hmm. But now I know that that's probably something that I should have done. Do they need vaccinations or anything like that? They don't that? need vaccinations, but they do need regular health care. This rabbit, of course, is already neutered. A rabbit that's not spayed or neutered, as they come into social maturity, about one to two years, can become aggressive, especially in their cage. We have animals surrendered and the owner says, you know what, they used to be nice when they were little and now they're not. A lot of times that's hormones. And, and when you say that they're aggressive, I mean, it's a bunny, you know. <laughs> I think a lot of how can a bunny be aggressive? We don't, what, what do they do? Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, a, a rabbit will be territorial over their cage. So okay. a female rabbit, if she's not spayed, spends too much time in her cage. You reach in to get her, she grunts and strikes at you, okay. which can and actually have, be scary. And they have long claws. Uh, they they do, do have nails that can be trimmed, and they can also rabbit punch you, and I bet they, they do bite. They, they can do, bite. yes, they can um, bite. So just because it's a funny little, we always think of the sweet little bunny, uh, they will defend themselves and be protective of their territory. So it is important to spay and neuter them and, uh, and to have daily handling and petting, mm -hmm. grooming. Do they need to be groomed? You know, a lot of rabbits can use help with brushing. They do their best to try to groom themselves, but a lot of rabbits will change coat twice a year. So you'll start to see big clumps of hair. In fact, in this cage, you can see hair quite 
all over the wall. So it helps them quite a bit if you can comb them or okay. brush them. So just like a cat or dog, that five minutes a day will make a difference for your rabbit, but also for the fur that you're cleaning up in your home. That's right. So um, should we move on to uh, some of the th do's and don'ts? Um, cedar, I know that that's a big thing. There's a lot of people included that have a problem with uh, cedar, mm -hmm. uh, can cause breathing difficulties. So this would not be something that we'd want to use for not only rabbits, but also not for other Small gerbils, animals. hamsters, um, any of your, your little small mammals that live in cages. Mm -hmm.